Inspirecast is a tool used to optimise and improve your castings through simulation. It can also guide you on the best method to fill your part to remove and reduce any defects. Using Inspire's intuitive five-step workflow, we can easily set up and simulate the filling and solidification of our cast parts. The first step is to import your 3D CAD model. This can be, this can be imported from many different formats. Once that's imported, we can start the five-step workflow. So the first step is to designate our cast part. Here, we can choose um, our material and our grade and our pouring temperature. Once that's been specified, we can then choose our gravity direction. We can use this tool to reorientate it to any face, or we can use the move tool to rotate our model. Once the first step has been complete, we can move on to the second step, which is adding our virtual gates. These can be added where you want the material to flow in from. And obviously you can experiment with different gate locations. You can designate the shape and the size of your gates. And we can also specify a start time and end time and compute the flow tracing to see the effect of each gate. Once your gates have been added, and multiple gates can be added to simulate material flowing into the part from different locations, we can move on to the next step of specifying our cast components. By clicking the components tool, we can see the different cast components that we can add or designate if you are importing your method. In my first run, I will only specify a core and a mould. Once I've specified the core, we can choose a material and our core temperature. If your material isn't there, it is very easy to create new materials using the material database tool. In my first run, I'm only specifying the mold and the core. By doing this, I can see where my defects potentially may occur and then let the software guide me on the best places to add further components. Once these have been added, I can go into my setup. Here we can choose what sort of casting we are doing. So whether we're doing gravity, high pressure, low pressure. Within gravity, we have other options such as tilt pouring and investment casting. Here, we, I might just be using a basic setup and specifying a, a velocity. Once you've done your setup, we can move on to the analyze stage. This is the final stage where we are basically specifying our mesh size. Here we can choose an element size and we can specify whether we want faster or more accurate results, or we can actually designate the element size ourselves. I'm going to be doing a filling and a solidification analysis. If we want to do thermomechanical analysis, we can also compute the deformation. This will compute things like residual stress. We also have advanced meshing options such as auto refinement to look for areas that are thin walled and, and, sm and small, and we can specify our mesh settings for those, for those areas. I'm going to set my first analysis to slightly faster, and then we're going to click the run tool. Once this is run, the first stage is to do meshing, then we'll go into the filling stage, then we'll go into the solidification stage, and then we'll have some results. We can now load our completed results by clicking this tool here. This will bring up our analysis, analysis explorer, which the results are split into two stages, filling and solidification. First, we can visualize the filling of our part. At the moment, we're just looking at the temperature and we can animate how the part is filled. At this stage, we might be looking at things like turbulences, areas solidifying before the part is filled, cold shuts where material fronts meet. Um, obviously, by visualizing this filling, we can we can check for issues before actually physically pouring the part. 
some other things we can look for in here obviously last air pressures airflow and many more we'll then move on to the solidification results and now we can look at how this part solidifies and again we're just looking at the temperature change here and here we can see the time taken for this part to solidify other things we might be looking for in this stage are things like solid fraction so this would guide us in the last liquid areas that would also allow us to guide us in areas where we might see things like porosity so we can see we are getting some porosity in this part we can look for other things in this in this solidification results such as pipe shrinkage which might not be acceptable so using our solidification results we can then go on to create a better method and hopefully remove these defects once we have analyzed our results we may then go and create a new method within InspireCast or our CAD tool so once we've done this we'll import this back into InspireCast and then we'll start the five-step workflow once again so first of all specify our cast part choose our material our grade and our pouring temperature we can then specify the gravity direction in this model we now have a filling system so we can specify that and then we can add our inlet so if you pour an off center you can do that if you want to pour in the center again you can specify a diameter we can then go on to specify our casting components so because our components are already created rather than creating them in inspire we can designate them so i'm going to designate this as my core i can then designate some risers and in this instance we also have a sleeve so we can use this tool to designate our sleeve and we can choose whether it's an exothermal or isothermic sleeve once our setup is complete we can then go into our setup if we want a more detailed setup we might this time be specifying a spoon height an actual filling time or a flow rate And then we can move on to our mesh settings again so this time once we've done once we've got our method set up you may want to do a more accurate so the mesh size will be smaller but we're going to get more accurate results so once you're happy with that you can click the run tool and this will load our results so once our results have loaded we can visualize and view them so again we've got our two stages the filling stage and the solidification stage and we can analyze whether our method has removed or reduced any of the defects in the original casting so we can view the filling stage and see how the part fills and look for any errors at this stage and then we can view the solidification stage and we can see how the part solidifies um, and here you might be interested in the last liquid areas and how the part solidifies pipe shrinkage you can see that's been removed from the part as expected with the addition of these two risers um, and then you might look for prosty we can see we haven't totally removed the prosty but this is an iterative process so you would redesign the redesign the method readjust it run it again and hopefully you can reduce or remove those uh, defects completely